the UN Agenda for Sustainable Development was launched in 2015 with 17 Sustainable Development Goals. These were put in place with an ambition to eradicate poverty by 2030, to address climate change, to improve health and economic prosperity. We're more than halfway through that timeline and progress isn't where it should have been. Climate change is one of the biggest challenges facing humanity today and it needs to matter on an individual basis so we can galvanize action both at a policy level as well as making traction in every way possible. There's a sense of urgency. We have to act quickly, we have to act urgently, and we have to act together. And CMU has a really good culture of people working across disciplines. We've rolled up our sleeves and we've gotten to work. To explore the opportunities to build connections and to identify a better way of advancing sustainability. What I think we see on a university campus like this is that it is the generation of tomorrow's leaders, our students, the, the 2030 generation, who recognise that they have a responsibility. They are the people who will be going into communities around the world and making the world a better place. Science is about the process of ensuring that research workflows and their outputs are readily accessible. CMU is a place that has a lot of research, a lot of education focused on climate change uh, and sustainability. Now the question is how do we get that research out to the community? Open source is a way of ensuring that software is readily available for others to reuse under an appropriate license. Open source software by estimates is 95 to 98 percent of all software. So open source software is everywhere. Uh, it's part of our everyday lives, it's in the tools and services and infrastructure we, we use every day. It is our experience that as we share data, so people want to be able to access the software used to generate or analyze that data. It's important because a lot of the problems we're dealing with are all hands moments. Uh, we need input from everybody, not only in terms of identifying the problems that they're facing, but the solutions to those problems. How do individuals, universities, governments work together? Open source software is a seamless way to make that happen. So there's a clear symbiosis between open science and our initiatives around open source and the establishment of our open source programs office. I view this campus as part of a living laboratory. The way we can demonstrate sustainable actions to students that will become the next generation, they will go out into the world and be a force multiplier. We have a lot of faculty working on energy technologies and energy systems. We have faculty that are working on environmental impact analysis, air quality, um, hydrology even, um, and then system level modeling and how the different technologies interact within a system and how that affects air quality or other environmental systems. I'm very interested in developing the database for East Africa and doing the modeling work to really understand what are pathways for providing energy services that meet development goals without massively affecting uh, greenhouse gas emissions. We use smart meter data, which is household energy use data, that will help us understand who is not consuming enough energy. So for example, a lot of utilities now have deployed these smart meters, they're often called advanced metering infrastructure, where they will record how much energy a household is using over time, sometimes every five minutes. And so what we do is we take that information and then we map that onto temperature. So then I can actually find who is not using their heating system when the temperature drops below 40 degrees outside who's not using their cooling systems when the temperature rises above 80 degrees outside. That means that for some reason, this low-income household can't afford to start heating their home in that 10 degrees. We study air pollution because we know that exposure to air pollution harms people's health. So breathing in particles and other pollutants can make you sicker and shorten your life. And so reducing air pollution can have a really big public health benefit for many people. A lot of the common air pollutant sources, especially in city, are tied to fossil fuel use. So things like transportation is a big source, 
uh, but also broadly across big parts of the US, it's how do we fuel our electricity generation. And so changing from fossil fuels to renewable fuels uh, not only reduces our climate impact, it reduces air pollution emissions, which then has the follow-on impact of improving people's health. One of our goals is to help influence policy, uh, and that can be at the national level because we interact with people at the EPA and they're building the national policies for the U.S. But it can also be to influence local policy because we are doing work often locally and, and communicating that to community groups and local government officials. And so we think that in the long run, our, our impact is to help influence future policies that are beneficial from a climate standpoint, from a sustainability standpoint, and from a health standpoint. Open source lets us stand on the shoulders of others so we can take software that other people have made beforehand, piece it together, add our own pieces to it, and then give it to others to embed in their own, in their own pieces. So for example, today, um, Google takes uh, the animation that we built with them using our open source software and embeds it on their own website. And they're able to do that through open source. It allows us um, to share uh, freely so for example, the, the animation behind me, we can zoom out and see that play out, the history of the planet play out any place on the planet, and that's because of the open source data that USGS and the US government has provided. So when you think about something like Earth Time or more generally mapping tools, uh, the openness has played an incredibly important part of this. So lots of people are familiar with Google Earth uh, or Apple Maps. Much of that is based on open source, but the reality is having open source alternatives allows people to basically have a choice in terms of how they want to address these types of issues. One of the things that we do really well at university is publish for academic audiences. What we see as our mission here at Create Lab is to take the same sorts of skills and apply them in real world community situations. So in real world places where um, people could make use of our skills to advocate for themselves around you know, air pollution, climate change, these sorts of things. And I think we strive to answer questions in a way that other people haven't tried to answer them before, right? So we're always creating this new knowledge and doing it in a way that I think is really stimulating. I'm excited with what we've done with the sustainability initiative on campus and what we're doing with students today to help them to better understand how this issue can impact them both personally, but more importantly, how they can use their personal actions to change the future. If we want to make the world a better place, we need to help the world find out about the work that's done here. And through our Open Science program, we have focused on ways in which we can share the products of our research and scholarship with anyone who might benefit from it. We hope to change the discussions to give people more of a common set of understandings and facts. This is a campus where artificial intelligence was born and we are on the cusp of a fourth industrial revolution. We strive to produce research that has real societal benefit. Open source software is the way we can build communities to address the issues around sustainability and climate change.